Thank you very much in, indeed, uh, Secretary General Wilhelm Zhao. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very pleased to be here uh, and together with you discuss this uh, fascinating uh, topic. I think actually, right one of these days actually, I tried to find the exact time, but I couldn't. Uh, it, 30 years ago, I got my first computer, uh, Amstrad Sir Charlie. Uh, it didn't have a hard disk, it only had the floppy disk, you know, it was making a lot of noise. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and but it was very useful uh, for me. Um, later, I got the hard disk, um, and then in 1995, when I came to the World Bank, I worked in Washington. Uh, I, I got a computer that was connected. Uh, it was connected to the internet, Mosaic, right? The, this browser, you many of you will remember it. Uh, and I got email. Um, I couldn't really use it because uh, I only knew one person in Denmark that had email as well. So, but, but we emailed a few times and, and then we kind of gave up a little bit because <laughs> we couldn't. Uh, so I knew one single person in Denmark that had email as, as well. And that was uh, 20 years uh, ago. Um, and, uh, and I tell this story uh, just to illustrate the technological development that we all know uh, has taken place. It's absolutely uh, astonishing and incredibly uh, fascinating what has happened the past three uh, decades. Uh, it has influenced uh, our lives, it has influenced our behavior. Uh, we have seen now the full introduction of connected uh, devices first computer networks, smartphones keeping us uh, connected. Uh, we can even see each other. Uh, I remember when I was a kid in school also, I had to, we had this innovation project, we should say what was the wildest idea we could think of. And I remember my wildest idea was exactly this, with telephones without a cord where you could see each other. And we all laughed and said, oh, never gonna happen, it can't be done. And today I talked with my wife uh, half an hour every evening and while I, I, I can see her in the eyes uh, and it's just like we were together. Uh, and, and I'm sure, you know, uh, a few years from now when we'll have this seminar, uh, I'll be here, uh, but not in person, I'll be here as a hologram, uh, and, and you won't even be able to notice it. Uh, my wife will hopefully notice, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, the technological development is just fascinating. Uh, but the connectivity it is what really brings benefits to the uh, technology uh, that we have. And there's no sign of this slowing down and it's really changing our behavior uh, every uh, single day. And connectivity in vehicles is of course uh, just uh, a logical, just as logical a consequence of this development. Uh, and, and it's the connectivity uh, in vehicles that will really bring the benefits uh, of modern technology to the transport uh, sector. Just like the Samstrat 30 years ago, very useful, but when it came uh, connected, it became enormously powerful. This will take time. Uh, there's a one billion cars on the running on the roads today. Uh, many of you know better than I. Uh, but only uh, 20, 25 a million of them uh, are connected in some way or the other. And it is traffic messaging channels or e-calls. That's the main connectivity out there right now. So there's a long way to go. If you stand down here on the highway, you count 40 cars coming by, only one of them will probably be connected in one way uh, of the other. And if you even in, if, if you in the US, uh, studies have shown, even if you in the US really made it mandatory to make connectivity uh, for cars, uh, the projection is that eight, 10 years from now, only one out of two cars would be connected. So there's a long way to go, and there's a long transition now where we, on the roads, we will have connected cars and non-connected cars going along uh, side by side <laughs> for a long time. And that is one of the challenges that we have to tackle. And that's why we really need uh, to look into both benefits and risks of all this uh, new uh, technology uh, and, and the various uh, stages. There will be vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, there will be vehicle-to-infrastructure, there will be vehicle to other things in the, for instance, vulnerable road users. All these types of connectivity will come together and we need to analyze it closely and we need to understand what benefits there will be and what risks uh, we will uh, have. Especially because, as said, for long term, we'll have connected cars and non-connected cars uh, and other vehicles on the road at the same uh, time. But there are enormous uh, benefits uh, to be taken out of it. Uh, we can get a lot of information in a car that our brain and our body uh, cannot collect as fast as the technology uh, can. Uh, we will be able to understand the surroundings, the vehicles uh, around us much better. We will be able to drive uh, safer. We will be able to avoid uh, accidents. 
car accidents is one of the biggest killer in the world, online with HIV, AIDS or malaria. 1.25 uh, million uh, uh, people are killed uh, every year and, uh, and, uh, and 10 or 20 times as many are injured uh, on roads. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of kids every year are killed because they try to get uh, to school and back uh, again. And the connected cars can help us to solve some of these uh, very uh, tragic uh, <coughs> problems of the transport sector. This is what you will explore here today and other options, how cars can become closer, more, uh, more uh, efficient, we can save CO2, we can tackle climate change. The connected car and the autonomous cars can bring a lot of uh, benefits. But we also need to deal with the very difficult questions, and I know you will uh, do so along the way. Uh, as the Secretary General already said it, a connected car and a more autonomous car uh, will make the driver being even less uh, attentive uh, at the moment where he or she uh, perhaps should be attentive, uh, because you trust the car and then you just speak on your phone and do the, the, the computer uh, or whatever. So there can be also uh, problems of road safety with connectivity. Uh, there will be uh, a number of issues, cyber security, ITU uh, being a strong uh, knowledge platform on some of these uh, issues, because we need to make sure that cars are not taken over by uh, terrorists uh, or attacks uh, that will suddenly uh, allow them uh, to create big scale uh, uh, problems in our transport system uh, and, and attack uh, the transport system and the vulnerable uh, parts of it. I have the most modern computer here uh, today uh, and still uh, it breaks down uh, once in a while every second day you know I have a problem and the connectivity and I have to reboot it and whatever and and rebooting a car uh, while you are uh, moving at 200 kilometers an hour perhaps on a, a German highway uh, is not going to be uh, an easy task uh, so we need to be really aware of all these problems and that's why here uh, we uh, uh, need regulation uh, of the new uh, technology and we meet, need to make sure that the new technology uh, allows us to operate together but also allows us to operate reliably and safe. Uh, so here we are at the motor show uh, in Geneva. You all came uh, here to see the cars but I also hope that you will come back to Geneva to make the necessary regulation and the legal framework that can allow these cars to really uh, operate. So come back to Geneva uh, again with this purpose. And I know many of you will, because here you have ITU and the standardization body working on issues of telecommunications. Uh, and you have uh, with UNECE not only 58 transport connections, many of which needs to be updated. The UNECE were hosting the UN transport connection conventions for historical reasons. There are 58 of them, not all to do with uh, vehicles and cars, but many of them have. And there are complex uh, issues here that we need to do, deal with in the conventions on driver behavior, infrastructure, traffic rules, liability issues, complex issues that need to be solved to really bring benefits of this new technology. And then we host, uh, as it was mentioned already by the Secretary General, the World Forum for Harmonization of Vehicle Regulations, the only worldwide body doing vehicle regulations uh, with participants from all over the world. And they are already now addressing a number of these uh, issues uh, on uh, automated and future autonomous uh, driving cars. Uh, and these regulations are made with the best experts uh, in the world coming together here in Geneva and finding the best solutions. And it's very necessary. I know many countries are now tempted. Uh, they want to be first runners. They want to be uh, the first countries to get the autonomous uh, vehicles uh, on the road and, and thereby get their industry to gain a competitive advantage. But I would warn against it. Uh, do not develop uh, piecemeal approaches to regulation around in the world in order to promote it. Come together in Geneva and let's do it uh, together. Because only then can we really reap the benefits of connectivity for all cars and for all drivers and for all uh, 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 citizens around uh, in the world. So. Come back next week. The World Forum for Vehicle Regulations will meet. There are a lot of issues there. They are looking at the road safety uh, and they are looking on automation uh, of the cars uh, already. Uh, next week, there's another opportunity to come together and make sure that we have the legal and, and, uh, and the infrastructure framework to promote the fascinating uh, new cars, connected cars, automated cars. It's a fascinating world out there, but please 
make sure that we work together to make it uh, happen uh, and inspire us at this symposium, come up with your best ideas and your most uh, difficult uh, questions, and then let's work together uh, to solve them. I wish you all a very good symposium. Thank you very much for, for coming. <laughs>